Welcome back everybody. This is Super Metroid Part 2. We are in Criteria at the moment. We had just made our first save and we're going to be moving on with the Morph Ball Bomb and see what we can find. Now this particular part I remember was rather hard when I first played Super Metroid and the only reason why is because I was lost. I had no idea what to do and where to bomb. And I mean, granted, if you're really paying attention you can kind of figure out you know, the wall, the type of walls you need to bomb and things like that, but for the most part, I was not that smart, but... <laughs> See, there, that far wall there, that's very bombable. I couldn't figure that out. For the longest time, I was just going between the old Turian, where Mother Brain used to be, and then, you know, back to the, the ship, and I was lost. I didn't know where to go after I got the Morph Ball bomb. It wasn't until, you know, one of my friends at school uh, said, oh, yeah... Oop, let me uh, update this real quick. Hold on. There we go. Awesome. Now we got our first energy tank. As per the challenge, yep. Kind of have it down there on the ground at the moment. So I can look and... Uh, wait a minute. Okay, those are missiles only. It's like, why is, why is my beam not working? You need something stronger, like missiles. But yeah, it wasn't until one of my friends at school mentioned that, oh, yeah, did you try bombing the far left wall there? And I'm like, what wall? What are you talking about? Oh, gosh. I'm not saying I was stupid back then, but some things I just didn't quite get, you know? I was just, I, I, my mind wasn't thinking like that. I was, wasn't thinking Metroid-like, you know? You gotta think Metroid when you explore these worlds and start looking for hidden passages and things like that, where you wouldn't think logical game design they'd be there. But whatever. Yep, and now we're going down to our first uh, world, as it were, outside of Criteria. Our old famous Brinstar. I love this music. It's good music. We're descending into a new world. And this is clearly where the game ramped up a quite a bit. Gave you so many options straight from the start, and you only have like 10 missiles to work with. You're just like, which do I choose? Which ones do I open up first? I don't know. But for the sake of this playthrough series, we're actually just going to be going through this pink area and that green area before that just once. It's there's we really have no reason to come back here after we defeat Spore Spawn, which is kind of surprising. Because I kind of went through the entire Nintendo Power Challenge down there. My book on the... I'm like looking down there as if you can see it. But yeah, it's on the ground right now. But uh, yeah, I planned out the route. And I looked through where it was taking me in the world. And I am not going to be coming back to this place once, once I'm done with this. This is it. And I think I... Oh, okay, Whew, I was about to say, I think I made a big mistake coming up here. I hate those. I'm sure they don't do too much damage to you, but I still hate them. Oh. And more missiles! Yay! Alright, more missiles. And this is one of the most helpful upgrades in all the game. It is the charge beam. Now, you think super missiles are the biggest weapon in the game? That is wrong. If you have the plasma beam mixed with the ice beam and the uh, wave beam, a charged shot of that is actually stronger than a super missile. And you can actually kill more enemies with that than with, like, 20 super missiles. And that blew my mind, because when I was younger, you know, super missiles was, was touted to be this amazing thing, you know? Like, this is the most awesome weapon in the game, super missiles. It's the strength of five missiles. Except that five missiles isn't really a lot of strength, so I mean, you don't know that unless you have access to the actual stats and key hex numbers of the actual game. You can't really I, properly identify which is the strongest weapon in the game, you know. So, I didn't have access to all that data, especially not in the 1990s. And that looks suspicious just on its own, that little cubby hole there. So naturally, that's a bombable wall. This is our next save point, just in case Spore Spawn something. I don't expect it to. It's a rather easy boss. I do. Depending on how long it takes me, it might take a while for, for me to kill it. It's a boss, I believe, in most speedruns can pull off. 
one of the major reasons for that is because I want some more missiles. Is because depending on how it wants to open up and how well your reaction time is, your battle with the spore spawn can take quite a long time and kill a lot of speedrunners' stats. And stats, I mean, good time. And these are key hunters. If I'm not mistaken, oh, I need to kill off here. They don't appear in any other game after this, except in Metroid Other M. That's when I think they make their grand re return. Ah, oh, yes, Spore Spawn. Again, not too hard. Oh, I think I need to duck down. Ah. Like, I want to get energy and stuff, but I don't really want to... Oh, here we go. Okay, normal shots probably won't do much damage to it. I think a charge shot could work if you run out of missiles, but... There's enough pollen falling down that you probably will never run out of missiles in this battle. I swear, he is one of the biggest time wasters. And you might be able to get two missile shots in, maybe, if you're good and fast. But he usually closes up his mob, like, after one shot. Yeah, here we go. Oh, come on! See, this is what I'm talking about. You gotta be really quick on the draw here. This is all there is to this boss. He just kind of goes back and forth, back and forth, and, and then opens up. And, and, oh, what? What? I, sw I swear that hit you. I wish there was a pollen that got in the way and I didn't see it. Okay, he's going to take me some time. Yeah. Big time waster in this video. Oh, yeah, he's getting a lot harder. Oh my gosh. This is terrible. Haha. <laughs> I'm almost afraid to come out of the... My morph ball here. Oh, how... How'd he hurt me? He wasn't supposed to hurt me in the corner. I mean, I don't really know much to talk about. I remember having a hard time trying to figure out how to beat this boss. I don't remember why I was having a hard time, but I was. In fact, I was having a hard time with all this game when I first played this. I don't think... I, okay. I think I got it... I don't know when this game was released, but I think I got it mid... mid-year 1994. Oh no. Oh gosh, that was a wasted opportunity. I think I got a mid-year 1994 and I didn't really beat it until like 1995. Like my first time beating it was not until almost a year later. It's kind of ridiculous really. Ugh, I should have not gone down so close to the end of my first E-Tank. Not on this boss. I'm just moving back and forth now. Not even bother. Oh, thank goodness. Whew. Took me a full E tank. I would have died if it's. <laughs> I would have died if I had to do no E tanks, uh, no E tank run. That would be terrible. See, I told you, I am not a expert gamer. I'm just a casual gamer. This is. I am playing this game in a way I would never do. I would have had like tons of missiles, several E tanks, and stuff like that before I even got to this point. I would have explored everything. Oh my goodness. That's a long drop. She should die. <laughs> it's a good thing she got the Chozo suit, though. And we got our first super missiles. Okay, we're good to go there. Oh, I thought I needed to get a super missile to get out of this area. Oh, and just in case you waste super missiles, you have these infinite spawners to 
to give you those super missiles back. Where would you waste them, of course? Right here. I just, just for whatever reason, happen to use all five of them up before you hit that door. So, that was good on the designer's part. Or if you used them all up and you didn't have the extra one to get rid of that block. You could go back and refill. And that's pretty much it. We're done with the pink section of Brinstar. Okay, what's the next one? Uh, the next upgrade is right here. Uh, not in that one. Uh, that one up there. Uh, hold on. Come on, let me go. Uh, okay, forget it. I think that needs a wall jump, which I am not good at. So, I think I'm going to skip this one, this missile upgrade. I do want to make it up later on, but I don't know where I'm going to make up that missile. Because I want to follow the, the Nintendo Power Challenge as best as I can and keep the number of upgrades to what it shows in the back of the book. So, I don't really want to miss that upgrade, but I'll probably will have to pick it up at another time in another area. So, we're going to put that particular upgrade on hold. But it's up in that pipe that I couldn't reach. Oh yeah, here's a section that pre completely baffled me. There is a technique called dashing, which is a button that you can press in Samus dashes that, as of right now, as of up to this point, they don't tell you that you can do this. So a lot of people were stumped on how to get past this room because the game never told them to, oh, you need a dash to get past. And I was one of those crazy fools who was, like, lost, saying, I don't know how to get past this room. Ah, uh, yes, this shaft. The red shaft. This shaft is... Where is it? Okay, here it is. This shaft we will be seeing a lot during our playthrough. You'll be going up and down the shaft several times throughout the course of this run. Or, I will be say seeing it several times. And our first, I guess, encounter with water, and how bad it is for your movement. Ah, that's too high. I'm gonna need the high jump boots. Okay, it says in the guidebook that you could get the spacer beam right now. And the only way I can figure you can. Oh my gosh, get. No, no, no! Get, get. Get out! Get out, Samus! Get out! Come on, get out! Oh gosh, water is so terrible in this game until you get the gravity suit. <sighs> okay. But as I was saying, the guidebook says in, in this run-through of the mi minimal challenge here, the Nintendo Power Challenge, that you can get the spacer beam right now. And outside of a wall jump, I don't see it happening. But this is our first encounter into Norfair, the second area of the game of the original Super Metroid, or the original Metroid game for the NES. Any other areas outside of this point is completely new. I mean, Criteria itself is new. But we're only coming to Norfair for one thing only. Oop, E-Tank. And this isn't it. E-Tank is not it. Yep. It's actually for the high jump boots. The high jump boots is what we're really after. And you can easily jump up here and... Or can I? Can I jump up here? That's <laughs> so odd. You can't even get past that unless you're in a... Okay, well, I'm going to fix this real quick. Okay, there we go. Okay, you kind of have to roll into the cubbyhole space there. Look at that. And another missile upgrade. So we are at 20 missiles. Oh, gosh. Oh, whew. I almost made it in time. 
<laughs> I'm gonna try and see if I can beat the uh, the item the item flurry. Oh, I gotta kill you, I guess. No, don't you get away. <laughs> So now that we've gone uh, the high jump boots in Norfair, we can go back and go after Crate now. I mean, you're going to go off into these other doors and explore them, but without the various suit, you're not going to get far. Because this actually treats uh, convection uh, very, very seriously, this, this game does. Okay, that looks good. i got to watch, see how it looks on... Um, I'm using OBS right now to record. It's really kind of odd, this setup. But before I go back to Crate, now that I have the high jump boots, I'm going to go back and get that spacer beam. So The guidebook says I could get it before this point, but I, I just don't think I have the talent for that. Let's not fall in the water this time, thank you. Yes. There's a trick here. If you decided to bomb that small, weaker block, you would actually fall straight through it down into the water. That that fooled me once. I know that. But it fooled me so many times when I was younger, I actually remember it to this day, so I don't do it anymore. But here's the spacer beam. I don't remember the spacer beam being in any other Metro game except for this one. But it pretty much it amplifies your your power output by three, as you can see, three beams here. Weapon. No, no, no. I hate those things. Get a little glimpse of Meridia. One of the new areas introduced in Super Metroid. Uh, yes. And this is kind of a trick. I mean, unless you're really just bombing the walls, and you don't have the x-ray scope at this point. You really, really don't. I don't see how people could naturally kind of just figure out that that wall on the right is super missile destroyable. I don't see how that they, they can figure that one out. And, um... Is there something I'm missing? Is there like a bomba wall here I'm missing? Uh, let me let me reset the enemies. Maybe maybe there was an extra enemy I wasn't seeing and Okay, there was this. Ah, here we go. Wow. Tell you, it's been a while. It really has. Oh, uh, it's key hunters. Oh, look at that! I can kill them and knock off their wings way, way sooner than with just the normal beam. This is awesome. Okay, I think there was a. I don't remember. I think there was like a missile up here. This looks like a place for a passage. Here we go. Ah, perfect! I will save here, and we will take on Crate in the next video. I think this is a good place to stop, right before our climax. <laughs> so we'll see how well we do against Crate or if he is really as hard as I remember. So until then, see y'all later.